In question one, we have to find the product in each part of the given pair of monomials. So let's start with the first part. In the first part, we have the monomials 4 and 7p, which we have to multiply. So we have to calculate 4 into 7p. So we can multiply the coefficients separately. So 4 is the coefficient of the first term and 7 is the coefficient of the second term. So 4 into 7 and then we multiply the variable parts separately. So there is no variable part in the first term 4 but in the second term we have p. So we have this uh, term p in the product. So 4 into 7 is 28 and 28 into p is 28p. So this is the answer for the first part. In the second part we have minus 4p into 7p. So we have to calculate minus 4p into 7p. So once again we multiply the coefficients separately so minus 4 into 7 and then we multiply the variable parts p and p so we have into p and p so minus 4 into 7 is minus 28 and p into p is p square so we will get minus 28 as the coefficient and p square as the variable part as the algebraic part so minus 28 p square is the answer is the product in part 2. In part 3, we have minus 4p and 7pq. These are the two terms we have to multiply. So minus 4p into 7pq. This is what we have to calculate. So once again, we multiply the coefficients separately. So minus 4 into 7 and then the variable parts will be p from the first monomial and pq from the second monomial. Now minus 4 into 7 is minus 28 and what about p into pq? So we have two repetitions of p so that will become p square and then we have a q so p square q. So we, we will get minus 28 p square q. This will be the product in the third part. In the fourth part we have 4p cube minus 3p. So 4p cube into minus 3p. So we multiply the coefficients separately. So 4 into minus 3. These are the coefficients and then the variable parts are p cube and p. So we have p cube into p. So 4 into minus 3 is minus 12. So we get minus 12 as the coefficient and p cube into p is p to the power 4. So we get minus 12 into p to the power 4. This is the product in part 4. And finally coming to part 5, we have the terms 4p and 0. So 4p into 0. So uh, we can multiply the coefficients 4 into 0 into the variable part is p. But 4 into 0 is 0 and 0 into p will also be 0. So we will get the product as 0. This is the answer for part 5. And with this we have completed question number 1. To learn more about how QMath can help you crack school and board exams, explore QMath Leap, a live online classroom program run by highly experienced and committed teachers.